Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. And in this video, I have this unboxing to do for a book that has totally crashed over this last calendar year. And after I do this unboxing, I want to talk about this idea of can books recover? Do we have evidence in history of Marvel comic books that show that if they go up extremely high and then crash, can they actually recover to their prior highs? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at some examples and see if we can make any determinations of that. But before I get into the unboxing and the video, if you guys could drop me a like, or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Helps support the channel, doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. And of course, we gotta do the fun stuff first, right? We gotta do the unboxing. Uh, now this is a book that I wasn't really looking out for this one, but I was on a short box and I wanted to kind of just test out their services. So I was looking around at some books that I can kind of pick up just for, you know, on the cheap, you know, nothing too crazy. And I came across this particular uh, book being sold and I was like, you know, that price seemed extremely low. And uh, lo and behold, even for a book like this that has actually crashed, uh, it was actually a really, really low price. So I thought maybe it would be worth picking this one up and doing a video about it. And for a whopping $60, I was able to find this book right here, Eternals number three, first appearance of the character known as Cersei in a 9.4 with white pages. Uh, of course, this is a book, The Eternals, number three, uh, written by Jack Kirby that came out in 1976. You guys know these books by now, the ones that absolutely shot up when we got the Eternals movie, and then 100% crashed uh, after the fact, uh, due to the fact that, you know, most of the people didn't like it, or, you know, even beyond that, I felt like uh, a lot of people were just sort of like speculating on these books, and everybody was trying to flip them into the market. And uh, this is a, a, an issue that I myself have been particularly interested in. I mean, I think a lot of the Eternals books are interesting, um, but I do think of all of them, one, two, and three have the most uh, possibility to continue to maybe go up or recover the most in the future. I think Icarus is a character that could be really big. I talked about him uh, in a previous video I did yesterday. I think Cersei is probably the most famous eternal character. I mean, she's been on the Avengers teams. She has like a relationship to the Black Knight. So I feel like there's the most potential storylines with uh, Gemma Chan uh, for her character. And then Eternals number two, because we have the Celestials in that one, I actually think that that one is going to uh, come back because I'm sure we're going to get a Celestial plot at some point in the future. But this one right here is an interesting thing to talk about because it does sort of beg the question, like this book shot up so much uh, during the course of last year. And maybe you're someone out there who bought the top. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, will this book ever go back up to those peak values? Well, the reality is we we don't know. There, there is no way to actually predict if things are gonna go up or things are gonna recover. But what we can do is look at a few examples of books and look at their trajectory of what they've done in the past, especially tied to the MCU, and see if there is you know signs that they could maybe one day recover. So let's jump into some of the data right here. And of course, the first thing we gotta talk about is this Eternals number three book, just to show you guys some context of the, you know, the graph and what this thing has done. Here I have the 9.4 grade, uh, but typically, you know, this is going to look the same if you're, I'm looking at 9.6 or 9.8, but this is the book that I, I bought in particular. You can see here in 2017, this was like a $43 book uh, when we got the Eternals announcement, shot up to, you know, that three figure range, $200 or so. After the announcement, you know, out of sight, out of mind uh, during 2020, this is a $100 book. And then when we get to Eternals, uh, this thing peaks at three. $323. And now kind of where we are, you see present day value $75. So I was even able to get mine for 60, which was, you know, such a good steal in my opinion. So this is an example of a book that absolutely shot up here. Here's the 9.8 graph, you know, it looks kind of similar, uh, goes up during the announcement, goes down, goes way up. And now basically where it is, is selling right around what this book was going for, you know, at some point in 2017. So to me, it's like, you know, how much lower could this book possibly go at that point when it's already, you know, flirting with the levels that it was selling at, you know, before we got any sort of media that would make it relevant to pop culture. Well, let's talk about some other books I think are interesting first to discuss. And these are two examples of books that have not yet recovered from their previous highs, but will be ones to watch out for come next year and will be interesting to discuss. But this one right here we gotta talk about is Marvel Superheroes number 13. This is the first appearance of Carol Danvers. And then the other book we gotta talk about is Ms. Marvel number one, which is the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Ms. Marvel. And let's take a look at some of the graphs for these two books right here. Um, I have the 7.5 pulled up for the Marvel Superheroes book. Um, this of course is a Silver Age book, so we gotta pick a grade that has you know a bigger sample size. But you can see right here, the, the chart for this particular uh, book's journey. In 2014, it was announced that we were going to get that Captain Marvel film, so it saw a big spike up, and then we had a little bit of a correction, traded sideways for a time, and then when we got to 2018, you could see how monstrous this thing climbs uh, during the course of that movie, and how steep of a decline 
It comes after the fact. So uh, this is a perfect graph example of a book that kind of had a similar trajectory to The Eternals. And you can see ever since we had those massive spike ups, uh, this thing has maybe slowly started to go a little bit back up, but really has not been able to recover in any sort of way. I mean, it's even selling for less than what it was doing when we originally got the announcement. I think if I look at the Ms. Marvel graph right here, it's actually going to show us a pretty similar thing where, you know, we get the 2014 announcement. Uh, people get really excited. It trades sideways for a time. We get 2018, we get the movie. Uh, everyone is, you know, buying this at peak prices. And then you see a massive, massive steep decline uh, to the point where it takes actually quite a while uh, all through 2020 into this 2021 market where now we're starting to sell uh, higher than that of what we had, you know, uh, during this 2016, 2017 time, but still nowhere near uh, what we got in 2018. So that's really that kind of first two examples of books that have not yet uh, been able to recover to their previous highs. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, we haven't quite seen Captain Marvel yet in the, you know, MCU make her, you know, a glorious return like we will see with her in the Marvels when we get that next year. Now, is it possible that the book is still not going to recover? Yeah, absolutely. And I actually think that these books will be the canary in the coal mine for the Eternals books, you know, due to the fact that, you know, a lot of people didn't like it because of the wokeness factor uh, with Carol Danvers and everything like that. And people didn't like the Eternals because of that factor as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that element has an effect on the values of the books. You know, we don't really need to get into you know, the wokeness and where Disney is going and Marvel and all that stuff. You know, I'm more interested in the numbers for this, but we do have to consider how fans react to it and how that plays a role in the values of these books. But it is definitely possible that we could see the book recover in those numbers. And if we look at some of these other examples, uh, we can maybe make that sort of educated guess or make that determination. So uh, let's take a look at some of the books that have recovered over the course of their, you know, excitement and their journey. And the ones that I want to talk about or focus in on are Avengers number 57, Avengers number 55, which is, of course, is the first appearance of Ultron. Uh, 57 is the first appearance of Vision. And then Iron Man 55, which is the first appearance of Thanos. So let's take a look at Avengers number 57 first. This is the first appearance of Vision. Uh, of course, you know, we have to look at, because, because of this is a Silver Age book, we got to look at a grade that has a higher sample size. And, you know, if we go down here to, say, like the 8.0, when we originally got Vision, which was in around 2015 or 2014, uh, probably would have been announced that Vision was going to make an appearance in Age of Ultron. Uh, you can see that this book definitely had a, you know, a steady rise up all the way to Age of Ultron and kind of peaked in 2015. Then it had a modest correction, nothing exactly like the Eternals book, uh, but definitely did have a pullback and was sort of trading sideways uh, to where it was prior to Age of Ultron. And then we got to 2021 and we had, you know, WandaVision. And that's when we really saw this book shoot up again. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, the 2021 boost, I mean, boosted every single book. And that's definitely a factor and something we have to consider. But the fact that this book has not drastically corrected suggests to me that the WandaVision show did actually kind of lift this book uh, back up in terms of its values. Let's take a look at some of the other grades here at the 7.5, see if it has a similar chart. Yeah, basically across most grades, you see the same kind of trajectory. 2015 is the height, trade sideways for a time. We get WandaVision and this book gets uh, shot up uh, in addition to the you know 2021 boom. Now, another book that is interesting to analyze is this one right here, Avengers number 55, first appearance of Ultron. Now, this is actually a book that also has not totally recovered from its previous record high. So I have a 7.5 pulled up right here. And you can see when we got the announcement that Ultron was coming to Age of Ultron in the Avengers movie, I mean, this book shot up massively. I mean, th this is one of the you know biggest increases in values. I think that there's been even you know beyond that of you know the Eternals books that we saw or Shang-Chi or things like that. Uh, but you can see just from the graph, this thing massively shot up. And then after the film, maybe it's due to the reception, which is something I think we have to factor into the, you know, Car uh, the Carol Danvers books and also the Eternals books, you know, people didn't really like it. And I do think that that is going to have an effect on the values because, you know, if people are turned off by it and they don't want to own the books, then, you know, you're going to have less buyers for those things. But this is still an interesting book where it's like a character that, you know, I just think Age of Ultron didn't live up to the hype and maybe the trailers were too exciting and everybody was a seller after the fact. But one of the things I think is interesting for this book is that even though we haven't seen it uh, recover to its, you know, all-time peak 
peak highs. What we have seen is that over the course of 2021, this thing has gotten a little bit of a lift. And what we did see is during the course of the What If show, when they utilized Ultron, and even into now with Multiverse of Madness, we actually saw some sales that were very, very encouraging. So you can see right here that the record high in 2022, when we had a Multiverse of Madness for this book, was $335. And that actually is rivaling that of the record high in 2014 and 2015, when the record highs were 350 and 350. So this is definitely an example of a book that seems to be slowly recovering to its previous high, uh, even though we haven't necessarily gotten like a full return of Ultron in any kind of way. And I think that, you know, when we look at books like Eternals, uh, number three, first appearance of Cersei here, I think that if, you know, we get that character once again in pop culture and they start to do things that are exciting and fans are getting excited about them and maybe they kind of redo the version of the character to something more interesting, uh, I do think that that book can recover. But we also have to consider that it's taken us seven years to get back to that previous record high that we set in 2015. So one of the things that we have to factor in is how meteoric was the rise of this book? When we look at Eternals, these books shot up just way too fast. And I think it's going to take a long time with many, many, many appearances of Icarus and Cersei for us to eventually get back up there. The book is gonna have to gain the audience's trust once again. I think that that is a factor when books shoot up too fast. Now, if a book has a slow and steady rise over many years and then has a pullback, that's an example of a book that I think can recover very, very fast in this market. And one book uh, that I think exemplifies this very well is Iron Man number 55. So let's take a look at that book right now. Of course, the first appearance of Thanos. This is another one that I think is interesting to look at, similar to that of, you know, the Age of Ultron book, or, or excuse me, the Ultron book. Uh, you can see that, you know, this is one that has actually recovered, even though we were quote unquote done with this character. Uh, you know, when we originally got the Thanos announcement uh, in 2011 at the end of the Avengers movie, this book had a big spike in the market, traded sideways for a time, but slowly, slowly, slowly uh, increased, increased, increased until we got to 2018, you know, in Infinity War. And that's when this book was at its height. It had a pullback after the movie in 2020 and was kind of bottoming out to around the, say, 2015 price of this thing. But, you know, with 2021, got a lift from the comic book market boom and also got another lift due to the fact that Thanos is in uh, the What If show. We have now the Eternals connection with uh, Star Fox and Arrow. So people thinking maybe Thanos is going to show up again. And you can see that this book is finding a new support floor for itself and generally speaking has sort of recovered to its previous highs that it was selling for at the height of Infinity War and Endgame. So uh, in my sort of looking at the data and my analysis of it, when I look at books like Eternals 1, 2, and 3, and in my opinion, I think it's totally possible. I mean, nothing is guaranteed. You know, it'll be interesting to see if the Captain Marvel books can recover. You know, if people are not fans of the character, if they don't like the portrayal, uh, then no one's going to want to buy the book. But if Marvel is able to do the movies, you know, well, and people are excited about uh, those characters, then they can definitely recover. And if you're someone out there who is a fan of some of these books uh, and you don't have them in your collection, now might be a really good time to buy it if you think that they could go up in the future. Anyways, that's all for this video. That was me talking about uh, this new pickup uh, for, you know, this $60 right here for this book. Thought I would pick it up on Shortbox. Just wanted to test it out. Um, not a bad book to buy for that price, in my opinion. Uh, anyways, let me know what you think. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and we'll see you in the next video.